Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate saga with SCS. And before we engage in the main quest here in the uh, Sverf Neblin village, or do anything else for that matter, we need to steal our Rod of Absorption back, before I forget about it again. <laughs> and uh, we can also sell some of this cursed stuff to the merchant here. <clears throat> and now we're going to rest, but first we need to rearrange our spells, because where we're going, we'll need a lot of chaotic commands, and we're also going to employ some fire-based tactics, which will require us to have a slightly different spell selection. I think on Senashira we might start memorizing Greater Malison more often now. And now that we have three mages and five spellcasters in total, and although I do not rely on spells that would require uh, the opponents to fail their saving throws for them to work, and I consider that to be the correct approach to rely on such spells uh, as little as possible, still there might be some situations where we might to apply Greater Malison first before unleashing that, uh, those types of spells uh, to increase the likelihood of them working. But anyway, uh, here we're going to have to keep this Ruby Ray, I think, for an upcoming mage encounter. But this uh, spell sequencer we are actually going to get rid of. And I might regret it later, because I wanted to set up a new one with a triple remove magic, which would be very useful. But I also want to showcase a, a fun trick, a cool tactic involving spell turning. So I think uh, single cast remove magics are going to have to do for now. Now in Jahira we don't need improve, um, we don't need insect plague, but more chaotic commands we're going to go for. Here on Animan I'm going to memorize one greater command, because <clears throat> there's going to be some fights that uh, we might want to use this spell on, and then more chaotic commands. <laughs> and uh, here we're going to give Animan one more bolt of glory for the uh, next fight, actually, and we're going to elaborate on that a little bit more in a second. Now, Imoen, I don't think she's going to use this uh, project image just yet. I'd rather have a uh, power word stun, that might come in handy. Also, uh, we're going to give her one sunfire, and here I think another another uh, stone skins, just so that all of our mages can have two copies of that. And that's uh, about it when it comes to Imoen but Edwin now. Uh, slow where we're going is not going to be too effective, but we definitely need more uh, protection from fire. We're also going to give another Sunfire for Edwin, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get to cast all of them, but I want to have the option. I'm going to try to uh, cast uh, quite a few of these Sunfires that should prove to be quite effective in the fights to come. And we're not going to need the Silence, but we're going to uh, memorize one improved haste as our secret weapon, and <laughs> this is again going to be a, a one-time memorization, although uh, clearly the game developers intended us to have access to improved haste by this point in the game, since uh, of course Karlig sold scrolls of it and then Ritty dropped a scroll of uh, improved haste, but since the spell is so powerful I think for a while yet I'm going to hold off from memorizing it on a more regular basis. And I think that's it, now we're ready, so we're going to rest once, and then we're going to talk to the chief of this village, and to the uh, leader of this Sverf Neblin here, Goldander Blackenrock. And actually, first let's just quickly inspect these containers. And they spawn some minor random treasures, and occasionally we can find a useful spell here. There's quite a few of them, but this should be quick enough. And of course, <laughs> no one is bothered by us uh, looting all of these chests. I think the spear is always there. I think there's another static weapon drop in one of these. Yeah, this club. So it looks like we mostly got gold and a gem here, but that's fine. Alright, and now's the time for that quest. Ah, travelers to our fair city. That would be rare enough, but you are surfacers by the look of you. Yeah, so Goldander here is a pretty friendly fellow. He's going to want to talk to us and give us a mission, a task that uh, he would prefer to entrust to an outsider. Too much Sverf Neblin blood has been spilled over this as it is. I will give you the details of the task first, and you may decide if you wish to accept. I tap rock that you will. As you can see, our granite home village is quite empty. I have sent the majority to deeper climbs far from here. It was no longer safe, and it is our own fault. We tunneled too deep recently and unearthed a monstrosity, a strange cavern that yielded death, a monster we have not seen outside of dreaming. So <laughs> this is as classic as it gets when it comes to different fantasy settings, where it's usually dwarves or gnomes here that uh, recklessly dug too deep 
and awakened some sort of an ancient evil, and this is going to be no different here. And so yeah, our, our task would be, of course, to dispose of the beast, and then seal the passage from whence it came, the, the chasm where it now uh, dwells, I guess. And yeah, it is going to be otherworldly. It is a beast out of dreams, or nightmares if you prefer. It is not of the rock. I do not know what to call it. Alright, so we're going to deal with it, but we're also going to ask him about Bodhi and Irenicus, and he actually knows something about them. Apparently they passed within the city of the drow, Usnatha. Now before you ask, I may know a way into the drow city. Well, I know a being that might help you. But he's uh, going to be pretty vague in his descriptions of that uh, person or creature. Um, yeah, he's just going to point us in her direction. And he's only going to give us her name, Adelon. And uh, she is no Svirfneblin. She is a creature of great beauty, apparently. She does keep very particular company, though, more so than others of her kind. But uh, getting to her is a problem, and because the passage to her lair is guarded against intruders by a force of her design. It is the blackest of dark, preventing even the drow entry. So it's a, it's a gloom so deep that uh, even the drow cannot navigate through it, which I kind of find a little far-fetched. The drow who are supposed to thrive in the Underdark and in total darkness, here uh, they cannot use their infravision or their senses, apparently, to guide themselves onto the other side. But I guess this is a spell, this is uh, a magical means of, of keeping intruders out. But anyway, he has a light gem that would allow us uh, to light our way through that barrier. And he's going to give us once we are done with his mission. And of course you can pickpocket the gem from him, or if you're evil you can just kill him and take the gem. Um, you know, th th this uh, conversation option even reflects that. And actually, uh, Jahira steps in there to uh, to stop you. And if you don't reconsider, uh, she actually leaves your party and, and goes hostile. But uh, anyway, uh, he's actually uh, that one person I mentioned earlier also, uh, that actually is going to notice if you pickpocketed his uh, light gem, because uh, if you do so, and then do the quest anyway, where he's about to reward you with the gem, he's going to notice that it is no longer in his possession, and he's going to be quite upset about that. But anyway, we're, we're of course not going to do any of these things, we're just going to uh, deal with that demon. And he also gives us this stone-shaped scroll that we're going to be able to use once the, the beast is dead, to uh, make the earth collapse, I guess, on that rift and uh, make it safe for the gnomes again. Speak. This and uh, here this guard is going to know that we have permission to pass now, and he's going to open the door, and this is going to be our battlefield where we're going to be able to summon the demon. And uh, the other passage is just a dead end. But before we, we combat this de de <coughs> excuse me, this demon, uh, it's actually a special type of valor, uh, kind of like a boss type, uh, more powerful and tougher, version of a Balor, although even ordinary Balors, of course, are, are powerful, especially with SCS. Um, they're supposed to be like the highest level demon, where, uh, you know, the Pit Fiends are the highest levels of uh, devils. But with SCS, like I said, there's a variety of, of demons and devils that all have their own abilities and tricks up their sleeves and different spells. Uh, so all of them are dangerous, but uh, yeah. Uh, Balors are, are powerful, especially in SCS, and this one is a, a special type, actually. And so we're going to have to prepare for it. And uh, first we're going to give this this other elven chain that we picked up earlier, that uh, improves casting time by a little. We're going to use that on Anuman in this uh, encounter. And this, of course, is going to ruin his armor class, and his saving throws are going to be worse. But he's not really going to engage... Um, the demon in melee in this fight. Basically what we're going to do is have Senashira solo it for the most part with some support from our other party members and Anuman is going to fill like a spell casting support role in, in this uh, encounter and um, for it specifically we have chosen Bolt of Glory with its atrocious casting time of 9 so at least that elven chain is going to make it a little bit quicker. Uh, since we're going to be facing off against the demon this is the best type of creature when it comes to the uh, amount of damage that the Bolt of Glory delivers, but what is even more important is that this spell is one of the very few ones that bypass magic resistance, and that's going to be very, very important. Uh, so we're going to have that, and for the same reason we're actually going to take out our Ring of the Ram, because uh, the ability to damage here also bypasses magic resistance, and perhaps Jahira can use that. 
So I'm going to give these boots of speed to Hanuman so that he can go in and out uh, quickly. So yeah, here's that scroll. We're also going to mostly, of course, pre-buff Senashira. Yes. And uh, yeah, now is the time to summon the project image of Edwin and dispense some buffs. So we're going to give this uh, spirit armor to Senashira and the other one to Kirinai. Uh, we might also start buffing up with some longer lasting buffs on Anaman and we might also give Senashira stone skin. And uh, she's going to drink that potion of heroism to make her more effective in combat. Now we're also going to give this protection from fire uh, to Imoen for future use. And the other one is going to go on to Senashira, of course. And uh, we might also start pre-buffing with some chaotic commands on our characters. And um, even though Jahira and Anuman are not going to engage the, the creature in melee, although they kind of could, because they are very well protected against fire, which is important, and then with chaotic commands uh, they will be protected against some other tricks up his sleeve, but uh, the thing with this Balor is that it can also cast Remove Magic, which is going to be very effective, um, because he's considered uh, to be level 25, I think. And uh, I want to have these buffs up for later, but just in case, because the demon can teleport and can unleash a quick remove magic, um, you know, or or just kind of stay in, in melee range of our characters, we are going to pre-buff a little bit just in case, so we don't get totally destroyed if he, if he like, goes in. All right, and of course, uh, Senashira needs one chaotic commands. With uh, the image of Edwin, we're going to summon some Mordenkainen swords to help Senashira out. And then last, we're going to apply that improved haste. And I think this is uh, required, because uh, we're going to have a lot of hit points to burn through on that monster. And we're also going to buff Senashira up with Death Ward, because uh, Balors have a Vorpal weapon, and uh, they're supposed to get it in Throne of Ball only, but... Uh, this one, you know, like I said, is a special case, and it can actually kill you instantly with its attacks. Alright, and now, last, we're going to get that improved haste, and get some mirror images as well. Alright, and now we can go in, now that we are protected against all that stuff. So here's the pit. The dark pit gives you a feeling of unease. And I'm going to try to lure the the demon to this northern edge of the of this chamber, just so that it's going to be a little easier for Anaman and Jahira to kind of keep maximum distance from him while casting their spells and abilities, uh, because I want to keep his attention solely on Senashira, who is going to be protected against you know his stuff, and I don't want him to even think about doing anything else. So here we're going to give spell immunity to abjuration to Senashira so that her buffs can be kept safe from that nasty remove magic and now we can summon this beast forth. Darkness overwhelms you and you sense another. All right, these swords of course want to go back to the image of Edwin. Yes. But yeah, we're going to try to lure him uh, to this this edge. And uh, now that he's present, we can talk a little bit more about his stats. He, as you can see, he already starts with Firestorm. That's one of the reasons that we, uh, of course, made ourselves immune to fire. But generally, he has 230 HP. Uh, he has 40% uh, resistance to physical damage and also 70 uh, magic resistance. So getting through to him with spells is very difficult. Uh, so that's why we chose, you know, Bolt of Glory and that uh, Ring of the Ram. Um, also, he's immune, of course, to a variety of different status effects. He's immune to fire and resistant to cold and electricity. And he has a, a variety of spells at his disposal. So Firestorm is one of them. Um, remove magic, he, of course, can cast that teleport. Uh, he can cast, he has symbol stun. He can do a lot of nasty stuff. He also starts out with a stone skin that he can later reapply. But we will be able to breach uh, this stone skin and remove it that way. What we are not going to be able to breach is his aura of flaming death which is a high-level ability divine spell that SCS gives to Balors permanently. So uh, we cannot get rid of it. And this is basically like a buffed up um, fire shield that is going to return fire damage on us whenever we strike him. But uh, I think that's, that's mostly it. So we're going to try to lure him here. And now that he unleashed his firestorm, we are going to breach his initial stone skins 
with uh, Senashira. Alright, and now our swords can go in. Alright, and now we should be able to get through to him, and we also need plus three weapons to actually damage him. Alright, so now we're going to use our improved haste and our swords uh, to hopefully, you know, dish out that uh, required amount of damage. And also, carefully with Anaman, we're going to try from, like, max damage, unleash that Bolt of Glory. And that should contribute some decent damage. Alright, hopefully the Valor is not going to be interested in, in teleporting to Anaman. Alright, so that's the Bolt of Glory. Alright, 24 damage. Pretty, pretty decent. Uh, of course, Senashira here uh, has the weapon in effective. That's for her offhand. And here, let's quickly use this Ring of the Ram. Boom. Another, well, 10 damage. It could have, could have been better. Could have been better, Jahira. Alright, and I think now we can rearrange our stuff already. Yes. Right, and he's near death. I think we should be able to deal with him no problem now. Just a little bit more before he can reapply his stone skins, if possible. Yes. All right, so that's it. He drops a flail plus three, and uh, all right, Edwin got unsummoned, so our uh, swords are going to get unsummoned very soon. So just in time, we are able to to keep them for uh, just long enough. Now we can use this uh, yeah, flare plus three that we're going to sell, and now we can use that uh, stone shaping scroll to seal off this this passage. All right, and have a happy ending for the gnomes here. Now it's going to be safe, and we can report with our success to Goldander. You are welcome back. We had worried for your safety as though one of our own were in danger. Yes, yeah, so of course. He knows of uh, of what happened, and uh, he's going to give us the light gem now, and also a mace, and uh, we also get some personalized experience, and that mace that we got is is pretty cool. Here's the light gem that we're going to need to get to Adelon, and now this mace. Can you? Yeah, Edwin can identify it. It's the Skull Crusher. It's a plus three enchanted mace with uh, some extra damage versus humanoids, but once again I have to ask, why so late? You know, why is it only here that we can get access to this mace? This would have been so cool for Anaman if this was available somewhere, you know, in chapters two and three, in Afkatla or some, in some of the other areas, because now it's basically useless to us and we're going to sell it because now Anaman, of course, is proficient with flails and... Um, uh, he has the Flail of Ages at his disposal, which is in every way better than the Skull Crusher. Actually, let's quickly sell some of our stuff to this mer merchant here. We're going to be able to get uh, some good money for it. Oh yeah, we have some stuff from earlier. So yeah, Jord the Bleeder, also a cool uh, item, but no use to us. The Gauntlets of Crushing, you know, a great item if you have a monk, but that's not going to be the case for us. And yeah, another 10,000 gold. That's pretty cool. And uh, before we actually progress to Adelon and explore um, the rest of this area, I'm actually going to go to the Western Tunnels that are mostly inhabited by the Kuotoa and uh, basically do uh, some stuff there because of what spell assortment we have right now. And there are also two other side areas that uh, we can get to from this like central hub uh, in, these, in this southeastern uh, corner. There are two other passages, and I think I'm I'm going to clear them out before actually progressing with the main story. Uh, before going to Adalon and doing all that. But yeah, here let's let's progress to these Kuotoan tunnels. And actually, before we engage the whole like army of the Kuotoa here, uh, we're going to dispose of some other enemies uh, first. Oh yeah, also Edwin leveled up, so let's just quickly do that. He gets some nice boosts when it comes to his saving throws, and he is also going to be our second mage now, with access to level 8 spells. So that's going to be cool. And we're going to, of course, select his spells later. Um, now what we're going to do is actually make Senashira invisible, and uh, summon our Flesh Golem, and summon a Skeleton Warrior, because uh, we're going to have to deal with some evil eyes. There's going to be a little pack of uh, of Gauths and a Beholder. And we're going to make Senashira invisible, so that she can guide our summoned friends. 
provide vision for them. And uh, they are going to deal with uh, the Beholder, and then Sinashera is going to be able to reveal herself and add some damage of her own. But here, Fleshy uh, has 100% magic resistance, and the Skeleton Warrior has 90%, so they're going to be pretty sturdy, of course, against the Beholders. Yeah, so we want to deal with that Beholder first. And then once only the Gouts are left, we will be able to like join the fight with Sinashira. Yeah, they can do some physical damage, and the Flesh Golem is actually pretty squishy at this point in the game. You know, in Baldur's Gate 1, when we had to fight against Flesh Golems, they were, they were pretty tough. But anyway, it's survived for now, and now we can join the fight with Sinashira. She's immune to all of the nasty things that they can do. They can just deal damage to her, and I'm just going to out heal it. Alright, so now that this is done, Sinashira has another special fight that she has to do solo. And that's going to be totally solo. Um, more demonic forces we're going to have to deal with. And I think what we're going to do, we're going to need a scroll from MON. And we're also going to need... Let's just renew this uh, fear, remove fear. And another thing that we need is that improved haste. This is the other special encounter where I feel like we need it. Especially if she is about to solo the whole thing. Right, and now we still have our chaotic command, still have our death ward. And we have remove fear, we basically are protected against all their super nasty stuff. This here is not a trap that you can disarm, just the first person that goes through this passage gets struck by this pretty juicy flame strike. And here we reach this mysterious chamber with some statues and some possible random loot. One gold. 23 gold. Sick. So <laughs> here we have this big statue of Demogorgon. And keep that name in mind for <laughs> much later in the game. Uh, but here in the, uh, the inscription on it says that uh, an animal sacrifice before great Demogorgon is needed to awaken his children from their long sleep. And it actually doesn't need to be an animal sacrifice specifically. Uh, it just has to be something that's not considered uh, a member of our party. So what you can do is actually dismiss someone, <laughs> like remove from our party in front of the statue and they're actually going to die and get sacrificed to Demogorgon. <laughs> so um, this is an area that you can go back to if we progress the main storyline uh, far enough. So if we wanted, we could delay this and like go back to Ethkatla, take, say, uh, Corgan, for example, <laughs> and use him as a sacrifice to Demogorgon. But uh, we're not going to do that. The, the loot we can get from this encounter is going to be pretty useful. And uh, uh, yeah, I think the only person that I would consider doing that would be Dorn. And I think we have permanently killed Dorn. And he's not going to reappear in the temple district anymore. So uh, anyway. Here there's going to be a couple of demon knights uh, spawning. I think there's going to be like six of them once we do that sacrifice. And we're just going to, you know, summon some poor monsters here so that they can get sacrificed. And um, they are pretty nasty because uh, they are high level. They have really good uh, physical stats and 75% magic resistance. They can also drain levels when hit, when hitting. And uh, also what's, uh, what's pretty nasty, uh, and the reason we have Death Ward on, although... Uh, that's also the reason why we're doing this on Seneshira, because she's going to be able to to avoid most of their damage, but uh, they have uh, two instant death spells. They have a power word kill and symbol death. And both of these spells we can avoid by being uh, healthier than 60 HP, but uh, you know they can, they can dish out some burst and uh, get you below 60 HP and then just quickly instantly unleash a an instant death spell. They also have some fireballs, so our protection from fire is going to... Uh, you know, be handy, they can also fear, they can stun, and they can blind. So, a blind we're not going to be able to avoid, and this is going to, of course, hinder her uh, ability to deal physical damage. So at least we have that potion of heroism to offset that a little bit. But anyway, what we need to do here is, I think I'm going to get a little bit more mirror images. Then we're going to give her the uh, spell immunity to abjuration because of course they also have remove magic that's also a big uh, reason like i could have adaman for example with mace of disruption you know being immune to their uh, level drain but they would be able to dispel all of his other stuff and uh, unleash uh, some spells that would you know spell death for him 
Right, and now we can... Let me just double check if I did not um, forget anything. And because of such a wide variety of, of stuff that can uh, make you lose here, uh, you know, I really want to make sure that I'm protected against everything. Right, and apparently a poor rabbit dog got sacrificed to, to Demogorgon, and, and this cobalt commando is going to be co to, to be completely destroyed here. Alright, and now they appear. So let's just focus. Alright, we're immediately blinded here, but um, I think I'm going to rely on her stone skins and her mirror images for a little bit. We're going to use some protection from magical weapons once they all get here and surround her. Alright, one of them is down. That improved haste, because of these blinds and everything, it's, yeah, it's really, really helpful. And I think now we're going to start with our protection from magical weapons. Alright, so there's another one. Nice crit there. I'm also keeping the plus three Warhammer, just so she can have a little bit of an easier time hitting them. They don't require a plus three weapon, I think. Uh, the Ashidina could, uh, could damage them as well, I think, but... Alright, we're, we're getting through it. No problem. Alright, boom! This one was slightly tougher. This was the one that has three magical items that uh, we kind of want. And um, especially the belt here is, is useful even now, but... Um, oh yeah, also they have like magical two-handed swords plus one, I think. So let's just get them into our bag of holding. Oh yeah, and I should have just quickly identified them. Alright, now we can stash them to sell later. And here this belt, perhaps Edwin is going to be able to identify some of this stuff, but this belt is going to be useful even now. But uh, the thing about it is that it's one of the components needed to assemble Chrome Fair later. So we of course need it. We totally need it. Right, and it's a girdle of frost giant strength, which gives us strength 21, which is pretty nice. And uh, this is um, armor of the heart, which we're going to have to identify with our glasses. And here is Soul Reaver, a really nice uh, two-handed sword, but unfortunately uh, good characters cannot use it, so Minsk cannot use it. But it's a plus four enchanted, and it also uh, reduces the thaco of um, opponents that it hits. So it's uh, kind of cool. Here, let's just use the glasses. Yeah, Armor of the Heart, which is a full plate plus three, which uh, I guess can come in handy, but not in the Underdark specifically, where we have these Drow full plate uh, that, that offer us an even better armor class. But we are going to hold on to it, maybe, uh, for later. Also, Kirinai leveled up, level 21. So she's uh, going to get some some saving throw bonuses, and we can level up her traps further. All right, and this belt, I'm going to think on whom to equip it on. We might give it to Kirinai, maybe, to increase her damage a little bit. But, um, you know, she has very good strength. And then Anaman already has the 19 strength belt, and I don't want to use uh, the higher strength giving items on her him, because, of course, he is a cleric. He has plenty of spells to increase his strength with. And on Jahira, I kind of like this setup with her having the belt of inertial barrier and using the gloves for her strength needs, at least for now. We could also make one of our mages very strong, um, which I don't see that big of a, a point to doing uh, right now. You know, uh, Edwin would be able to do like more damage with her sling, but you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, he he wouldn't uh, have improved Thaco from it, and that's his, his worst thing. And of course he only has one attack per round anyway. But, uh, yeah. Yes, now we can proceed. And in this chamber, we're going to have our first taste of some Kuotoa. And I think before we engage their whole army, there are go there's going to be a couple of encounters with them. And uh, also a, an encounter with the Drow that I want to do. I think we're going to do all of that in, in the uh, next episode. So I'm going to cut it off here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next episode.